Today is about the Jonestown Massacre. Do you want to get some Kool-Aid? Yeah. I'll Do drink you like Kool-Aid? I'll drink the Kool-Aid. In fact, this article says it wasn't Kool-Aid. <clears throat> it was Flavor Aid. Flavor Aid, which was the cheap version of Kool-Aid. And it wasn't even in America. No, it was I in thought Guyana. Jonestown was somewhere in America. No. In, no. On November 18th or 19th of 1978, over 900 people died from drinking cyanide-laced Flavor Aid. On this date, parents and children gathered at the compound of the People's Temple cult in, jo- in Jonestown, Guyana, knowing the fate that awaited them. An outcome that would leave the world spinning. And we're going to talk about that right after Misty sips her drink. <laughs> Are we ready to begin? Good morning! My name is Misty. Come on, Ike, it's time. We would be honored if you would join us. The greatest adventure of all time. Yeah. We just become best friends. Yep. Come on, let's get in the car. Refreshment. Yeah, that's some good flavor aid. Mm. Why would they bother building all these buildings if they were just going to kill each other? Well, because they lived there for a really long time before they did. Oh. There's way more to the story. Well, tell us all about Reverend Jim Jones. Oh, Reverend Jim Jones. There is a fly. Get out of here, fly. <laughs> Sorry. The, wheel, the wheels are really a, falling off this show. I just had a meltdown from the fly. <laughs> all right. So Jim Jones was a minister who preached unconventional uh, socialist and progressive ideas to a predominantly African-American congregation called the People's Temple. Um, at the height of its popularity in the 70s, the temple had a membership estimated in the thousands and was courted by local politicians in San Francisco. By 1977, Jones had grown paranoid from the media scrutiny over the temple's suspicious activities. So he and his numerous followers moved to an agricultural settlement in Guyana, a remote country east of Venezuela. A lot of gold in Guyana. Well, they moved down there. I mean, basically it was a cult. And they they moved because they thought that the U.S. government was out to get them, essentially. I was wondering how they recruited people without the internet in the 70s to move down to Guyana. So they were a big deal. talk. You go out and you talk to people. Like, but, that's how cults recruit even now. They but they talk. were a big deal before they moved. Yes, they enough very people. big deal. It's yeah. like Jim moved down there and was like... Oh, I'm going to recruit 800 people to move down here? Oh, yeah, no, he no. took them with him from yeah. San Francisco. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of concern for the welfare of people because a lot of family members, you know, had started to speak out and be like, my sister is, you know, they would start to write their Congress people and say, my family member's been kidnapped by a cult and they're living in Guyana. So the U.S. government actually did start doing some research into the People's Temple and they sent U.S. Congressman Leo Ryan to visit Jonestown in November of 78. So he went with a team of people and checked out the settlement, sat down, talked to Jim Jones, talked to people to make sure that they actually wanted to be there and that they hadn't been kidnapped. Mm. Um, as he and his team of people were leaving, he was shot to death along with four other people by gunmen from the People's Temple at an airstrip. And so following those murders, Jim Jones decided to put his emergency plan basically, mm-hmm. into play, and that's when he asked his followers to drink this punch, starting with the children first. Um, in all, there were n- over 900 people who died, including Jim Jones, which what's really weird is he was not found dead from cyanide. He was found dead from a gunshot wound to the head. Nobody is sure whether he shot himself or he was shot by someone else. Mm. Um there is speculation that he may have taken his own life or that his nurse, Annie Moore, fatally shot him before she killed herself in the same manner. Um, decades later, there are still survivors, though, of Jonestown that remember oh, being a part of the church wow. that they devoted a good portion of their lives to. Um, you know, just like any other cult, it started out with good intentions. You know, the intent was committing yourself to something outside of your own selfish interest, you know, doing things for community, like building a farm and making food and that being community food and, 
you know, getting off the grid and being able to be sustainable and survive in a community of people. That's the idea of how it started. And then it just went sideways. Um, but a lot of people, you know, don't realize that that's where the popular expression drinking the Kool-Aid comes from mm -hmm. is from he, I mean, he was able to talk over 900 people into drinking this Kool-Aid and killing themselves. That's yeah. insane. Did you mention earlier in the origin that they started in Indiana? I didn't know they started in Indiana. I thought it was San Francisco, but um, maybe they moved to San Francisco. They were headquartered in Indianapolis, Indiana. A decade later, the church moved to a more open-minded area in Redwood Valley, California. Yeah. It wouldn't be long until Jones opened a branch of the church in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And that branch came, became the headquarters shortly after. Interesting. And he went down and visited Guyana a few times before he moved everybody down there. Right. So, I mean, initially the church, from what I understand, was started to preach about racial and social equality. And, you know, like I said, like all these things that started with good intent and went bad. Um, Jim Jones had a lot of dark qualities, like he had an innate need to control people. He was very deceitful um, and he had a lot of anger issues. Um, he grew up in Indiana and was a big loner. Um, when he did have friends, he would uh, play with them in the family's barn and he would make everybody his captive audience and give shows. Hmm. But this is where it gets a little weird. He also performed experiments on animals and conducted funerals for him. Psychopath. Yeah, right? Yeah. He Ugh. would he would conduct experiments, but then he would also have a funeral for the animal That's if weird. it died. That is weird. Yeah. Very weird. Um, hmm. super obsessed with religion and death. So, I mean, you know, that's a good cocktail right there for some fucking crazy shit to go down. Very crazy. <clears throat> Jim Jones' sons say their dad didn't understand reality. You think? Jim Jones Jr. and Stephen Jones both spoke openly about their fathers during ABC's Truth and Lies, Jonestown oh. Paradise Lost documentary. Oh. They discussed who their father was to them. They spoke about their father as a leader and how he didn't understand reality like everyone else. In the documentary, Stephen said, there was nothing spiritual about my father. He had every bit the loved and... Ju what is going on here? What? This isn't even English. Look at that. What? Look at this. Anyway. Oh, yeah, I don't even know what that is. That's Juicy Soleil? Juicy Soleil. <laughs> I don't know what that word is he, at all. He had every bit the loved and juicy soul, I guess soul, that everyone else does, mm. and he had lost complete sight of that. His entire existence was superficial, according to Stephen. The, the superficial existence happened over time as Jones changed with power. Wow. Um, he was obsessed with Adolf Hitler and Stalin. <sighs> Not surprise, surprise. <laughs> right <laughs> so i mean uh, of course it was branded a cult and members blindly devoted their allegiance to the cause at the expense of their whole lives everyone most people gave their entire life savings over to jones and that's how they you know amassed a small fortune to be able to do some of the things that they did um and you know it was all based on they were very devoted and hardworking people that, you know, performed very selfless deeds for their community. Um, some of them even turned their lives around, got off drugs, things like that by joining what was a church. But of course, as any other cult, they called them all, they, you know, referred to themselves all as family rather than a church or a cult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they had practices, right? What? They rehearsed it. They rehearsed drinking the Kool-Aid? People's temple Flavor members aid? rehearsed the revolutionary suicide before the massacre. Jim Jones planned the Jonestown massacre for a period of time. We know this because of the practice suicide members took part in before the killings. Jones refers wow. to these practices as white knights. As like not K-N-I-G-H-T. Right. But knights, like at nighttime. Right. These rehearsals included recordings of Jim's talking over speakers so everyone could hear. The rules were no one could talk when Jones spoke. And they had to listen to him for, for, they had to listen for him to call White Knight. Once the members heard White Knight, White Knight, get to the pavilion, run. Your lives are in danger. On the speakers, they all had to run to the middle of the camp. Wow. I wonder if they that knew they were so, drinking the Kool-Aid. They did. 
They knew they were going to die. They all knew what was happening. Like he, he did not hide the fact that they were going to die. But did they get the same, you know, like um, those, all the people that like. And, they, and like some of them watched people die in front of them and still did it. They, like they didn't all take it at the same time. You know, there were people that lived longer and didn't die. at the exa- They didn't all just drop dead at the exact same moment. That's weird to think about. If I was Jim, yeah. I would have given everybody a cup and then had them all drink it at the same time. But no matter what, it's still your body chemistry reacts differently. So it wouldn't have mattered. Sure. But there'd be like if you went in order and you did one by one, the people at the end are chickening out when they see the first couple hundred people dead. They, they, yeah. I, I mean, like they got up to over 900 people. That's yeah. a lot. <laughs> Do they? But did they have the belief that they were going to get discovered by aliens or something? Remember those no, people in California? I think they thought that they were going. Oh yeah. Who were they called? Uh, Branch, Branch Davidians. Branch no, Davidians. Branch Davidians were Waco. Oh right. Um, were they the Haley Comet people? Yeah. The, the Bop Comet was that it? The Haley Bop. Hail Bop. Hail Bop Comet. They wore like that? they wore robes and they thought they were going to jump yeah. on the. But did they? Did you get anything cool for doing being part of this group? Like. The hail bop comment people? No, this, the Jonestown people. Didn't. Oh, no, you got dead. That's what you got. But, but when you died... Oh, I think you, you you were going to eternal heaven. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's still... he Still, it was all based in quote-unquote normal religion. <laughs> you know, where, where everyone else goes when they die, supposedly. Hmm. People who uh, refused to drink the Kool-Aid died in other ways. Yeah, I think that's where that gun came into play. Contrary to popular belief, not everyone drank the Kool-Aid on that fateful day in Guyana. Some of the members refused to drink the potion, especially once they saw people falling to the ground and dying. Frightened children started crying and pleading with their parents to let them go. Parents started trying to find ways to escape, but no one could escape from the middle of the compound that day. People walked around with guns, shooting anyone who refused to drink the Kool-Aid. Some people died from knife wounds while others faced a lethal injection of the drink. That's so crazy. Yep. So crazy. That's so nuts. What a weirdo, um, weirdo wacko. Well, and then there's <clears throat> so I'm, there's a little bit here about um, Leah Ryan, the congressman that had gone down there to investigate everything. Um, the reason he had gone is because he had a, a large number of his constituents in his area. Um, he was from California. Right a lot of family members had called his office or written letters Mm. and said, this is happening. Um, So he wrote a letter to Jim Jones requesting an invitation to go visit. And at first, Jim Jones said no, but then later on said, yeah. So he traveled accompanied by several journalists and a relative of some of the people that were down there. He took one of these relatives with him. Yeah. Um, Didn't make it back. During his visit, a couple of the settlers told the congressman they wanted to come back to the United States and that Jim Jones would see that as a betrayal. Afterwards, when Ryan, the defectors, because he took some of them with him, he was like, okay, you're coming with me then. Tried to. To go home. Yeah. And journalists were waiting at the Port Kate Uma airstrip for planes to take them home. A truck arrived carrying Temple gunmen who then opened fire. So they killed the congressman, four other people, and then everyone else was injured. And that's who you're talking about at the beginning of the episode. Yeah. Right? So I didn't know he was a congressman. Yeah. In his memory, Ryan received a congressional gold medal and a post office in his district of San Mateo, California. Um, his former aide, Jackie Spear, who was injured um, and is now a U.S. congresswoman. Whoa. He carried around with him a right, righteous indignation and passion for the powerless of society and didn't shy away from questioning the status quo. He didn't win all of his battles, but with Leah, the fight was as important as the outcome. Wow. That, that's crazy. They it, killed a congressman. That is the, well, that's what triggered him to like, all right, well, right, that triggered the, yeah. you know, it's time for the emergency plan. Yeah, let's drink some Kool Aid. There was an old lady that lived through all of it because she was asleep. That's how I'm going to end this. Oh, my God. This story is incredible. That's exactly how I would have lived through it. I would have just been napping. Me too. Yeah. So there were a number of survivors. On the morning of November 18th, 1978, hours before all of it unfolded, a group of 11 temple members, including a mother and her three-year-old son, walked 35 miles to escape under the pretense of going on a picnic. Hmm. Two men were able to bypass the armed security through a combination of luck and deception. Three other temple members 
were sent out on a mission by Jim Jones' aide to deliver a suitcase of money. And so they were gone. Um, but the most remarkable story is a woman named Hi- Hi- uh, Hyacinth mm-hmm. Thrash, an elderly African-American woman who slept inside of her cabin throughout the whole ordeal. She woke up the following morning, walked over to the senior citizens building where she saw bodies covered in sheets. In her memoir, The Onlyest One Alive, published in 1995, Thrash recalled, there were all these dead being put in bags, people I'd known and loved. God knows I never wanted to be there in the first place. I never wanted to go to Guyana to die. And I don't think Jim would, I didn't think Jim would do a thing like that. He let us all down. Look at this picture. I just want to take her in my arms and hug her forever. Mm. She slept through the whole thing. Bruh. Miss Thrash. Much like I'm our glad audience you made it. is doing right now. Okay. I'm just kidding. You that bored? No. Okay. <laughs> um That was a weird one. It's a it's a weird ass story. That's why it's perfect for weird Wednesdays. It's perfect. Perfectly cool aid. Flavor aid. Excuse me. But that's don't, a big deal. I'm, that's what I'm going to start saying. Don't drink the flavor aid. Yeah. People will be like, uh, I think you have that wrong. I'm like, no, no actually, no. Actually, don't. I have that right. You no. should listen to my daily pop culture podcast. Yeah. Um, we'll stay tuned tomorrow, folks, for... We're going to do a quiz. A quiz. We haven't done that in so long. Yes. Are you quizzing me or am I quizzing you? I don't know you? yet. All right. We'll stay tuned tomorrow to find out the exciting action. Dun, dun, dun. And uh, stay away from the Kool-Aid, folks. Or the flavor aid. Flavor aid. Oh.